All right, all right. So welcome, people. It seems like we are having some late commerce this evening, but it is great to see you once again. Oh, very nice haircut, Walter. Thank you. I cut yeah. my hair by myself. Oh, really? You did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see looks... a mirror. Yeah. yeah, it looks sharp. Yeah. You know, like on the sides, you look very, very yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you have some <laughs> some olita in the front, yeah, yeah, a wave in yeah, the front. Yeah, yeah, I like I like the, this style. Oh yeah, it looks very nice, <laughs> uh, very very nice. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, it also yeah. you know I I kind of want to go back to that style. I used to I used to rock that when I was like fourteen yeah. or fifteen. So, a yeah. rebel person, a rebel person. <laughs> yeah, right. Like you want to you want to ride a motorcycle and like yeah yeah <laughs> go on the road and have fun. Yeah, Seems like yeah, that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> pretty cool, pretty pretty cool, nice. Um, so yeah, I was saying, um, some some late commerce this evening. I was I was <laughs> basically starting to think. Well, I think tonight I'm going to have to do the class by myself. You know, that's sad. It has never happened before. Um, luckily to this point, I have never had to to like um carry on a class by myself, like when with not people here. However, I have started a couple, and it's very, very sad when I start the classes and nobody is here just to, to hear, you know, the, the information. But well, um, guys, welcome. Welcome to our second last class. Um, you know, like 20 minutes ago, I was this worried about our class because my electricity cut off for a while. I didn't have electricity for like five seconds, but still, you know, uh, a, a shutdown is a shutdown. <laughs> And I was like, no, please don't, not tonight. Because I mean, you know, we want to basically get it done, you know, complete the, the process and finish with the with the program. Um, so yeah, I was, I was a little bit worried. I thought for a minute that I was gonna have problems with my electricity, but luckily we are here and we're ready to continue working. Um, so for this evening, I remember we talked about different topics that we could cover that will be sort of like a special. And uh, for tonight, we're going to be working on phrasal verbs. You guys already know how yeah. phrasal verbs work. You guys know that there are many styles and many um, uses for phrasal verbs. Now, something very important to take into account is that phrasal verbs work mainly when you are um, like speaking with Native Americans. That's like the main moment when you're going to be using phrasal verbs. Of course, there are many phrasal verbs that have regular replacements. When we talk about regular replacements, we mean words that are more accurate to a dictionary, words that have a specific uh, meaning apart from this phrasal mm -hmm. verb. There are some others that do not really have that, that replacement. One of the biggest example, and maybe the, the most clear example of that, will be breakup. You know, when you have a breakup, when you finish a relationship, the only way to say that is by specifically stating that, you know, stating that um, you ended a relationship. Like, that's very literal. Instead of saying that, you can say breakup. Um, so that would be like the, the only one, or one of the only ones, that is very specific as a phrasal verb. Of course, we have others that are way more um, common or commonly used in their regular form. Um, Sandra, thank you for letting, letting us know. I um, hope that whenever we have the chance you know, to participate, you might uh, have your system working, but still, it's understandable if you cannot. But all right, so that is what we're going to be working on. That's the, the work for tonight. Apart from that, apart from the work, of course, you guys know tonight might be the last time I'm going to have the chance to ask you um, questions like apart from um, from the question that I normally ask on the last day of the of the of the course. Uh, and I was thinking today is my girlfriend's birthday and I was asking them what question can I ask? You know, like I, I, I normally ask questions to my students, I told them. And uh, I am wondering, what can I ask tonight? And well, uh, I know it's, it's like, a, like part of something that doesn't really matter, but my best friend, she's currently working in Qatar, like in, working and living in Qatar. But this week specifically, she had a vacation. She had 10 days off and she came here to El Salvador. She was, so she spent the day with us today. She brought some of the albums from the uh, World Cup 
and uh, many stories, you know, about her about her job and about things that she has lived to this point. Um, so they gave me the idea that I asked you guys about specifically that, the World Cup. Um, now, I know that not all of us are fans of football or soccer, but if you are, and if I ask you that, I hope that you can answer this question. The question is, which is, which is your top three of countries or um, national teams that you consider are going to be able to win the World Cup this year? You know, so top three teams that you think are um, capable enough of winning the World Cup this year. So, así que fácil, ¿verdad? O sea, tres equipos que ustedes consideran que sean capaces o son su top tres de equipos para poder ganar eh, el Mundial este año. Como les digo, si no son fans del fútbol, o sea, es entendible, no hay problema. Igual, pueden adivinar tres equipos, quién sabe si al azar, ¿verdad? Le pegan y yo más adelante me voy a acordar. Hey, aquella noche alguien me dijo algo, algo sabía. Entonces, ok. ¿Qué dices adivinar? Guess. Yes. Guess. Yeah. Guess. Take a guess. Hay otras formas, pero no necesariamente son así literales. Lo mejor es decir guess. Take I can guess. say I try to guess. Yes, I'll try to guess. Okay. Okay, so who would like to be the first one? Walter, do you have a top three? Do you like soccer yeah. even? Yes, I think you do, right? Yeah, yeah. Kind of, uh, sort of. In my case, I think Brazil. Okay. Argentine, Argentina. Argentina. And um, I don't know how to say German. Germany. Germany, yeah. Germany, yeah. German will be the, yeah. the, 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 the gentilicio or uh, the nationality. Yeah. And Germany is the country. Okay, yeah. so Brazil, Argentina, or Germany. Yeah. Those are three very strong uh, countries or three very yeah. strong national teams. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see if they get to win. Yeah. All right. Um, Javier, how about you, Javier? Who or which countries do you think are like the more capable to win the World Cup this year? The top three that you have or may have. Good evening. Good evening. Um... I guess probably uh, could be friends. Okay, friends. one of the most younger players, and I can I can say all the players are so so good players. Yes, they are very good. That is stronger, great. faster. Uh, Kylian Mbappe is a bigger. Is a is a good a good. A Star good forward. Figure. Yes. Yeah. He's a really good yeah. forward. Nice yeah. word there. Uh, first, in the first place, France. In the second, Germany. In okay. the third, I hope <laughs> Brazil. But I don't think so. Mm, we'll see. You know, anything can happen with the games like this. And many people are also saying that. World Cup is almost never played at the date it's going to be played this year. Like, it's normally played in June. Another of the things is that normally it's played on, on places that are a little bit less cold, less, sorry, less hot. So places that are chiller or cooler. Um, so that may affect many players. And Brazil, for example, has, or most um, Brazilian players are accustomed to really hot weather. So that might be yeah. good for them. Um, so we yeah. don't know. Maybe, maybe. Maybe. Okay. So very good picks, you know, very good picks. Uh, yeah. Let's see if, for example, Patricia, do you have a top three of teams you consider are able or will be able to win the World Cup this year? Okay. Good evening, everybody. Um, I don't like uh, soccer very much, but I think that the best team maybe. Germany, Argentina, and uh, Italy. Okay. Sorry. The only, the only sad thing is that Italy didn't make it. Sí. Es la única cosa. Entiende, usted dijo al principio, ¿verdad? Que no le gusta. Italia no llegó. Es lo único malo. Sí. Pero igual, igual. Germany and Argentina are always there. They're always there, you know, trying to win the World Cup. So, yeah. Germany and Argentina, very two good picks. Um, Italy was very good last on, on the last World Cup. I don't know what happened to them during this um, eliminatory 
uh, faces, they just failed very, very bad. I, I think they were out only by two points. It was not very, like, a huge difference, the, re the, the reason why they were out. But, yeah, they were left out of the World Cup, sadly. <clears throat> Okay. But okay, okay. Thank you very much for letting us know um, your picks. Now, uh, how about Miguel? What do you think, Miguel? Who will be the top three for you? Uh, I don't like it, the football too, but uh, I I can try to guess. Uh, I think Spain. Okay. Uh, Maybe Brazil and I don't know how do you say Portugal. 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 Yes. Portugal. Portugal. Okay, so Spain, Brazil, and Portugal. Those are very good picks. I don't like the Portugal one because I don't want El Bicho winning, but it's all right. You know, it's it's your your take, it's your idea. So good, very nice. Yeah. Spain, Spain is is building up to become a very strong national team. Saben que eso es una cosa que muchas personas a veces cometen error con esa palabra, el decir selection. O sea, porque pues la palabra en español a la que estamos acostumbrados es selección. selección. Ajá, selección. Pero en realidad no se dice así. Normalmente la palabra que se utiliza es national team. Sí, o sea, como el, el equipo nacional, ¿verdad? Entonces no se dice selection, sino national team. Pero ok, nice. Very nice. Um, let's see, Jancy, would you be willing or having a take on this? Do you think you have a, a, a couple teams that you think may win the World Cup? The uh, uh, Lakers. <laughs> <laughs> Lakers. No, yes. we're talking. We're talking about like uh, national teams, o sea, equipos nacionales, o so um, países. Uh, no, um, Germany only. The football. Yes. Yes. Very strong one, Germany. Germany has one of the best leagues. <laughs> Hablando de ligas, verdad, como de de de, de equipos. Alemania tiene una de las más fuertes y siempre Alemania es un gran candidato, así que, o sea, no es raro, ¿verdad?, que Alemania sea mencionado dentro de los, de los más altos contendientes. So, yeah, Germany, very good pick. Do you have another one, Jancy? No. No? Okay, so Germany. Espero que no, pero bueno. <laughs> Honestly, guys, if I'm to be totally honest with you, my top three, I only have a top two. My, 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 very best like the one that wanted to win the most is argentina right argentina. now is argentina <laughs> yes um like a couple years ago it will have been belgium but now my top three is argentina belgium and england those are the ones that i want uh the world cup to be to be taken by but still you know it's it's a fair competition hopefully um so we'll see okay uh how about <laughs> Carlos, Carlos Gonzalez, do you have a selection or a top three of teams you consider to be able of winning the World Cup? Hi, good evening, everyone. Hello, well, baby. in my case, uh, the three teams are Brazil, mm -hmm. uh, Germany, and France. I think that they are uh, the strongest, the okay. well, stronger Brazil, teams in that are participating in the, in the World Cup. Yeah, those are very strong. However, they say that there is a, how can I say this? I forgot the word, but there's like a, like a curse. Yeah, curse. There is a curse for teams that win the World Cup. It's very weird, very strange that a team that has world, won the World Cup to win again on the next World Cup. But still, France is a very strong team. And maybe, you know, maybe they can break the curse. Cuando hablamos de curse, es como un maleficio, una maldición, por decir así. So, curse. Por eso, de hecho, incluso, no sé si ustedes sabían eso, cuando hablamos acerca de las malas palabras en inglés, en muchas ocasiones se llaman como curse words. Sí, curse words. Entonces, son but, palabras... But, Fran but uh -huh. Francis is Africa. <laughs> I think. Yeah. Yes, I mean, they are a very strong team, so maybe, maybe they can get it. Ok, Sandra, creo que sí ya le funciona el, el audio. Hace ratito la mutía porque así ya estaba funcionando. Okay, so tell me, Sandra, do you have a pick? Do you think you, you have an idea or three teams that you consider me able to of winning the World Cup this year? Uy, la, la puse en silencio, so you have to mute.
Okay, we'll give it we'll give it a second. Um, how about Jacqueline? What do you think, Jacqueline? Do you have a top three of teams that may be able of winning the World Cup this year? Hello. Yes. Teacher. Hello, hello. Okay, In my tell case, me. Uh, my top are Portugal. Okay. Uh, Argentina and oh. Spain. Okay, Portugal. These are my Argentina. favorite teams. Nas very national teams. Very good teams. Yes. Saying the team win teams. Uno de esos tiene que. <laughs> Alguno de ellos tiene que, sí. Yo, en serio, el año pasado, cuando terminó la, el Mundial, yo me quedé solo, o sea, enfocado en solo Bélgica. Yo me quedé traumado con que Bélgica tenía que haber ganado. Porque, o sea, era el equipo más fuerte en aquel entonces. Pero igual, hoy ya no sé si la vayan a lograr. Pero still, yes. Belgium is a very strong team. So hopefully they can get, make it, you know. But yeah, Portugal, Argentina, and Spain, very strong, very good picks. Okay, um, how about Ailey? Do you think you have a top three, Ailey, of teams that may be able of winning the World Cup this year? Hello, good evening, teacher. Hello. Uh, um, I think France and okay. Argentina. I don't know. <laughs> France and Argentina. Okay, yeah. those are very good. Those are two very, very good ones. A todos los que han dicho Argentina, les voy a regalar una recarga de dos coras. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Argentina, Argentina, Argentina. A la Chivo Wallet, por favor. <laughs> ah, la Chivo. No, ya está. La, esa cosa. <laughs> no, hombre. Okay. Amilcar. How about you? Do you have a top three, Amilcar? Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, teacher, good evening, everybody. Uh, <laughs> uh, really, uh, actually, it's a, it's a question very difficult for me because uh, I have a, a special team, okay. uh, but but I I am uh, so expected when 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 the our our team in the Salvador are going to play with other country. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I I'm so happy when when we win the the play. All right. Okay, <clears throat> but uh, I uh, I don't know who I can say and admiro. Uh, uh, for example, uh, El Rey Pelé. Okay. El Rey Pelé, Maradona, mm -hmm. and Messi. Okay. Okay. Uh, I I believe that they are a, a big player. Okay, so okay. maybe maybe <laughs> the teams that can win are going to be then Brazil or Argentina because those are you know Pele from Brazil and Messi and Maradona, two big stars from Argentina. Okay, okay. <laughs> very nice. Yeah, I so... believe I have earned two core. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. You have the two cores okay. earned okay. to your side. Okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> ya van a dos cores ahí en camino. Espérate, van, van caminando. Okay. okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, how about Roberto? What do you think, Roberto? Do you have a pick? Do you have a say in this? Do you think you have a, uh, a couple teams previously selected? Uh, good evening. Good evening. Uh, my my top three um, be Brazil, uh, France, mm -hmm. and Argentina. But I think that another European national team can the surprise. Yeah, there's always surprises, you know, in the World Cup. Like for example, in the last edition. We had Croatia becoming one of the best teams, making it to the semifinals and almost um, being able to, to win the World Cup. You know, even getting to the final to fight against or play, sorry, against France. So that was a very, very special and uh, surprising event, if we can call it that. Okay, um, how about Daniel? What do you think, Daniel? Do you have a pick? Do you have a top three of teams that you consider able or capable enough of winning the World Cup this year? Okay, good evening. Um, my team, since I uh, was a kid, mm -hmm. has been Argentina. Okay. So my three favorite teams are Argentina, Argentina, 
in Netherlands. Oh, okay. But, but I have, I won Argentina and friends a few minutes. Okay, nice. Yeah, that sounds, sounds pretty accurate, you know, very, very nice. So Argentina and Netherlands. Nice, very good. Okay, so I think that will be enough for the question of tonight. Um, I think now we're going to go into, well, this class, you know, the, the topic or the, the, the rest of the things we're going to be working on this evening. So, I told you guys I was going to bring you some phrasal verbs. Of course, some of them are going to be sort of common. Some of them maybe you guys already know, but I promise there are going to be some others that are relatively new. So, when we talk about phrasal verbs, we also have something very important to consider. And it is the fact that they have two special um, like skills or they are there are two kinds of phrasal verbs. There are the ones that can be divided, that can be set apart one word from the other. And there are some others that only work properly, only have a proper meaning if the two words are together. Remember, the two words in a phrasal verb are going to be the main verb and a preposition or the verb and a preposition. So there are some that can be divided. You can say, mention, for example, a noun or a thing in the middle of, um, of said phrasal verbs. Of course, some of them are more inclined towards being mentioned, being the mention of someone or a person in the middle, and some others are more towards having the mention of a thing in the middle. So we have those two special additions, if we can call it that, about phrasal verbs. So the first one we have here is the verb go off. Go off is one that we use when we're talking about um, something that suddenly starts doing like a sound. We can refer to an alarm in the case of like a car, in the case of the alarms that we have to wake up, or we can also refer to this when we talk about bombs. Of course, though that will not be the best way or the best occasion to mention it, but whenever something happens all of a sudden, that is going to be um, understood or able to be mentioned as go off. Sí, o sea, el, el verbo, el phrasal verb go off, eh, puede entenderse tanto como se disparó, sí, o se encendió. O sea, en el caso de las alarmas, en muchas ocasiones, pues, se encienden a raíz de algo, ¿verdad? O sea, como normalmente tiene que haber algo que cause esa situación. También se puede utilizar go off para hablar acerca de bombas o cosas que en cualquier momento pueden reaccionar o pueden generar alguna acción. Entonces, go off puede ser para el caso específico de alarmas, el caso eh, de, qué sé yo, algún aparato de sonido que de repente inicia eh, a emitir sonido, o si no, puede ser también para cosas que suceden de repente. Ok, principalmente cuando esas cosas también generan otra acción, como les comento, por ejemplo, puede ser el caso de algo que se caiga, o sea, se caiga y eso genera otra acción, que otras cosas se caigan, podría, ¿verdad?, entenderse o podría mencionarse con go off. When that went off, it all started failing, o sea, cuando eso sucedió, cuando, o sea, pero de repente, sí, cuando de repente eso se cayó, eso se quebró, todo lo demás también se cayó. Entonces, igual, en el, sonido, en el caso de las cosas que emiten sonido, o sea, con el caso específico de las alarmas. So, here we have an example. From the time my alarm clock goes off, I am beginning my workout. From the time my alarm clock uh, goes off, I am beginning my workout. I think not, not many people have a schedule or a, um, a routine like this. But if you do, let me tell you, you are very, very strong-minded. Because, yeah, I think in my specific case, I don't have the will to work out in the morning. That's why I go to the gym. When I go to the gym, I like to go in the afternoon because it's more like I go and burn some of my energy that I have accumulated during the day. But if I start working out at the very beginning, like in the early morning, that will be something very um, hard for me because I feel like I will drain the few uh, um, or the tiny amount of energy that I got from sleeping 
early in the morning. But yeah, that's something uh, that people, you know, can do. But the main thing here is the verb go off. Now, moving on, we have the next one is wake up or wake somebody up. When we say, for example, um, wake Roberto up, you know, we're giving an instruction for someone to go ahead and uh, bring Roberto out of his sleep. So wake Roberto up will mean that Roberto no longer has to be asleep or uh, we need Roberto to be awake. So yeah, wake up or wake somebody up uh, can be used separately. You can place a name here in the middle. So we have, for example, oh wait, the, 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 the definition for it will be emerge or cause someone to emerge from a sleep. This only has that meaning. It doesn't really have any other meaning. It's uh, specifically used for bringing or um, trying to get someone out of his sleep. Okay, I woke up at seven o'clock. This is only when we're going to be providing an explanation, like when we are saying um, something that we did in a routine, probably, or trying to explain the events that took place to get to something specifically. So I woke up at seven o'clock. And the next one is when we give an instruction or we're also um, explaining what someone else caused another person to do. So here we have, she woke him up gently. She woke him up gently. So we have that this phrase or verb can be divided as you can see here. She woke him up gently. So instead of this him, uh, you can mention anything that can be considered someone. Sí, o sea, cualquier persona o cualquier eh, nombre que se pueda referir a persona. Por ejemplo, o sea, podemos utilizar incluso plurales. Puedo decir yo, eh, digamos, she woke Juan and Pedro up gently. Sí. O si no, si no quiero decir Juan and Pedro, I can simply say she woke them up gently. O I can say she woke the kids up gently. Sí, the kids up gently. Cualquier eh, nombre o noun que se pueda referir a personas puede ser introducido, ¿verdad? En ese espacio entre las dos palabras. Claro, eso como les decía, se usa cuando estamos explicando la situación que otra persona generó principalmente. ¿Se puede utilizar para explicar algo que yo hice? Sí, pero si yo causo a otra persona eso, esta situación. Pero si yo lo uso para explicar lo que yo hice, o sea, yo no puedo decir, por ejemplo, walk myself up, porque ustedes no se pueden despertar a sí mismos. O sea, el hecho de despertar a alguien es causarle a alguien que se despierte. Ustedes simplemente se despiertan. Entonces no pueden, o sea, despertarse y después despertarse a sí mismos, ¿verdad? Sería muy contraproducente. Así que por eso mismo, eh, cuando se usa dividido es cuando causamos una reacción en alguien más. Sí, so she walk uh, the kids up gently es porque ella causó que los niños se despertaran. La siguiente, get up. This is very similar to wake up. Uh, this is basically the next step. After you wake up, you are normally going to get up. Uh, get up or get somebody up means rise or cause someone to rise from bed after sleeping. So rise or cause somebody to rise from bed after sleeping. This verb can also be used to ask people to get up, like uh, in the case of someone who's sitting in a, in a chair, you can ask people to get up, you know. However, there is, of course, the word stand up. A stand up is more common for events when you have like a crowd or a large amount of people in, in a place. Uh, normally, you will say a stand up. But if you're only talking to one person or just a couple people, you can tell them, get up from the chairs. Like if you are trying to get them to move from there. And also if you have authority over them. Sí, o sea, si tenemos autoridad sobre alguna persona, es normal, ¿verdad? Que podamos utilizar o decirle get up. O sea, como por decir algo, levántate de ahí. Digamos si en el caso que ustedes tengan sobrinos, hijos, y estén sentados en un lugar donde no deberían estar sentados, you can tell them, get up from there. Sí, en lugar de stand up from there, porque stand up es mucho más eh, formal y muy más, mucho más utilizado en reuniones. O sea, cuando hay una gran cantidad de personas, ¿verdad? Que están reunidas en un lugar específico. Así que get up 
eh, puede utilizarse en ese sentido también, para decirle a alguien que se levante, no solo para levantarse de la cama. El uso más común es para levantarse de la cama, pero también se puede utilizar para levantarse pues, de, otros, eh, de otras situaciones ¿verdad? específicas. Examples here. I got up feeling tired and disoriented. I got up feeling tired and disoriented. Has this ever happened to you guys? Have you ever got up like this? Have you ever felt like you are not in your same bed? Or if you are like staying or, or, or waking up in a different place? Have you ever experienced that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah? When you, yeah. Uh, when, when when you did have it happen? hangover. <laughs> Yeah, that happens when you have a hangover, you know, yeah. No. When the room is so dark, happened to me. When, sorry? When the, the room is so, is so dark oh, really? and suddenly wake up, wake up from the bed and try uh -huh. to find the bathroom, for example. I feel so disoriented. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah. You know, yeah. it happens very often to me when I fall asleep in my hammock. Like, normally... Part of my routine after I finish the classes is that I take my computer, I go to the hammock and I get everything ready, you know, you know to upload the videos into, into or onto YouTube. Now, sometimes, very, very often, I fall asleep there. Like I, I, before I finish uploading the videos, I fall asleep there. And I normally get up or sorry, uh, wake up around 2 or 3 a.m. And when I wake up, I feel lost. Like I'm not home, like I'm in a different place because I'm not used to sleeping in the hammock. So this, for example, for this course, I think it has happened like three times already. Sí, o sea, en el curso, en este curso, este mes, básicamente, me ha pasado tres veces que me quedo dormido en la hamaca mientras estoy subiendo los videos y cuando me despierto es tipo, ¿dónde estoy? <laughs> so yeah, I happened feel like to, that. Happened to me when I visit a friend or a, 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 a relative and yeah. my, my mind, I... I thought that is my my own bedroom, but when suddenly wake up in the in the in the morning and it's so dark, oh my god, where 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 wake up? Uh, right side or uh, left? Yeah, left, left side left of the bed. Side, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Yeah. When I was living yeah. in the U.S., it used to happen to me a lot because I was, I mean, um, moving like frequently moving from place to place. So it used to happen very often to me that I will um, wake up. Let's say I was visiting my family. So I will wake up at one of the beds that probably they, they, they lent me or borrowed me for me to sleep. Uh, and then I went back to the place where I normally lived. And when I woke up there, I felt lost. I felt like I was still at my family's house. So that was something very common. And it happened very often. When I was living in the U.S., because I mean, as I was visiting family, as I was moving from place to place, that was something kind of kind of confusing for me. Okay, so the next one is, for example, we got him up. Of course, this him you guys already know. It can be replaced by any person or any noun that can refer to a person. You can use here. Of course, when we say noun, it also includes the fact that you can use um, names, like actual names. All right, uh, so we got him up because he had to go to a friend's house. We got him up because he, we had to go to a friend's house, ¿sí? Lo levantamos porque teníamos que ir a la casa de un amigo. O sea, alguien estaba dormido, lo levantamos porque teníamos que irnos a la casa de un amigo. Okay, then we have put on or put something on. Uh, when we say put on, we are talking about Clothing. Normally, it refers to clothing. So if you're going to wear something, the action is called uh, put on, all right? When you are already wearing it is when you start to call it wear or wearing that specific thing. But the action of putting something on is referred basically as that, as put on. Uh, the definition plays a garment, jewelry, etc. on part of one's body. Sí, o sea, el put on es básicamente, ¿verdad? Como bien diríamos en español, ponerse. Eh, ¿Podemos colocar objetos en el medio entre put and something on? Sí, se puede. Uh, let's say that it's feeling cold and I have someone that I worry about. Like, let's say it's my nephew and I don't want my nephew to be cold. So I can tell him, put your jacket on. 
put your jacket on or you will get cold. So that is uh, including here the noun referred, referring to a thing, not to a someone, but to a thing. Ok, aquí no necesariamente vamos a utilizar nouns refiriéndose a personas, sino que a cosas, ok? En el medio se puede colocar, pero solamente para cosas. Uh, an example here is, I put on my watch and set off a little late. I put on my watch and set off a little late. Muy bien. Next one up. Dress up. This is very simple one. This one doesn't really take a lot of um, time to explain. When you dress up, it means that you put on a smart or formal clothes. Sí. Dress up. ¿Cómo podrían ustedes interpretarlo en español? Dress up. ¿Cuál podría ser una interpretación que le den a ese, a ese phrase? Vestirse ¿no? elegante, Tuche. Uh -huh. Vestirse elegante. Uh -huh. Ahora, también se utiliza dress up cuando vamos a disfrazarnos. ¿sí? Cuando nos disfrazamos también se dice dress up. El motivo es porque normalmente, o sea, se supone que el tipo de vestuario que utilizamos when we dress up is not a regular clothing. Sí, o sea, no es la ropa general que generalmente utilizamos, ¿verdad? Cuando hacemos eh, la acción de dress up. Si ustedes son, por ejemplo, un ejecutivo, alguien que todo el tiempo está acostumbrado a utilizar trajes, a andar, ¿verdad? O sea, forma, eh, vestido de forma muy elegante, básicamente ustedes no van a utilizar el verbo dress up. Se utiliza el verbo dress up cuando ustedes utilizan camisetas, utilizan polo shirts o así simplemente camisas, nada más, sin saco, sin corbata. En ese caso, ustedes si están acostumbrados a vestirse de esa forma, sí utilizarán el verbo dress up cuando ustedes se coloquen, ¿verdad? Ese tipo de ropa. Así que si ustedes están acostumbrados a, a vestir así, o sea, vestir formal o with smart clothes, as, as this mentions, ustedes nunca van a decir I dress up, sino solamente dicen I get dressed, porque es su vestuario regular. Ok, así que no es como que todo el tiempo que vemos a alguien vestido de esa forma, vamos a, a utilizar el verbo dress up. Dress up se usa más que todo con personas que no están acostumbradas o no estamos al menos nosotros acostumbrados a ver que se vistan de esa manera. <coughs> so, I only dress up on special occasions like weddings or other celebrations. This is one example, a very good example as well. I only dress up on special occasions like weddings or other celebrations. Many people just do this, you know, they don't like wearing a suit. They don't like wearing ties. They rather just wear a t-shirt or something regular, like normal, you know, no uh, formal clothing. Therefore, they only dress up for special occasions. Now, tidy up or tidy up something. Uh, bring to order or arrange neatly. Tidy up. Tidy up se utiliza entonces cuando ordenamos algo, ¿sí? Tidy up es cuando estamos ordenando algo, principalmente cuando lo ordenamos, o sea, en una manera, ¿verdad?, en la cual eso se vea, eh, podríamos decir, nítido, ¿sí? O, digamos, utilizamos alguna, alguna clase de patrón para ordenar las cosas. Si lo hacemos por color, si lo hacemos por tamaño, por forma, <clears throat> that is what we're going to be understanding as tidy up. Entonces, so, teacher, eh, por ejemplo, las display que trabajan en los, los supermercados, tidy up the They products. normally tidy up the products, yes, in the supermarket. Yes, yes, yes. That is part of their job. They uh, spend their time tidying up uh, the products, you know, tidying up milk, tidying up uh, cheeses, tidying up snacks, tidying up beverages. So, yeah, Cookies, tidying beers. up. Yes, 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 yes. Porque esos ejemplos, Miguel. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, yeah. So yeah, tidy up. Uh, let's say that the children don't like tidying up their bedrooms, but they always do it. The children don't like tidying up their bedrooms, but they always do it. Sí, a los niños no les gusta ordenar, ¿verdad? Sus cuartos, pero siempre lo hacen. Ahora. También se puede usar para cosas regulares, pero lo que sí les comento es que lo más común eh, es utilizarlo para cosas como un poco más ordenadas, ¿verdad? Cuando vamos un poco más allá. Ok, then we have switch on. Y, yes, tell me. Teacher, yes. Eh, hay una palabra para eh, decir el tenia up, pero cuando es, ordenamos como algo muy superficialmente. Como donde mira la suegra, decimos en el Salvador. Ah, eso sería... Ok, uh... 
Hmm. Let me see. Cuando hablo el chat, a veces me vienen las palabras a la mente. I know there's one. Yes. Need it up is another phrase, Albert. Yes, yes, yes. Need it up. Mm -hmm. Is the same to tie it up? Very similar meaning. Yes. Oh. Yes, it is a very similar meaning. Uh, but yeah, I remember there was one. Garnish, no. Garnish is not that. Garnish is más que todo para el cuerpo de uno cuando uno se, se arregla solo más o menos. Ah, se me fue. Ahorita sí se me fue. Pero sí hay una palabra. La voy a tener que buscar para mañana porque sí hay una palabra que se utiliza para hablar acerca de, o sea, del orden así, eh, no tan ordenado, ¿verdad? Un orden solamente superficial. Cuando simplemente ordenamos algo para que lo vea la visita, digamos. Pero no es algo que necesariamente nosotros gastamos mucho tiempo ordenándolo y, y, y que todo en, en, en digamos, los cajones y todo está ordenado. Existe una palabra, I don't remember right now, but I'm going to try to find it for you guys tomorrow. Okay, teacher, thank you. Yes, all right. So the next one is switch on or switch something on. Start the flow of operation of something by means of a tab, switch, or button. Sí, iniciar, ¿verdad? La operación de algo eh, al utilizar un tab, o sea, un, 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 ah, un interruptor, un tab, un un switch o un button, sí, o un botón. Entonces, si she switched on the TV to watch her favorite show. She switched on the TV to watch her favorite show. So here we have that um, in this occasion, we can say this as well. She turned the TV on to watch her favorite show. She switched the TV on to watch her favorite show. Now, what this does is that it places a little bit of a better uh, or a stronger uh, meaning. A la serie de hace rato está diciendo que se quiere conectar. I'm so sad. Bueno, eh, so yeah, this adds a stronger meaning on the TV. So when you, when you say this like this, it is not necessarily only an explanation, Uh, or you can use it when you're trying to point that that device is working or was working, ¿sí? Ese es como el, el objetivo de utilizarlo de esa forma. Si solamente digo, she switched the TV on to watch her favorite show, estoy explicando lo que ella hizo. Ahora, she switched on the, the, sorry, the TV on, she switched on the TV, perdón, on the TV to watch her favorite show, es para explicar. Pero si yo digo, she switched the TV on to watch her favorite show, es para explicar, sí, pero para explicar que la televisión estaba buena, por decir algo. En el momento en el que ella lo utilizó. Si por algún motivo la tele se arruinó, está dañada en este momento, yo puedo mencionar, ¿verdad? Marta switched the TV on to watch her favorite show earlier. Sí, entonces esa es como el, la diferencia que existe entre colocar el switch on the TV en switch the TV on. Cuando yo digo switch the TV on, la importancia está más que todo en TV. Sí, o sea, quiero mencionar, ¿verdad? Que funcionó la tele cuando ella la encendió para ver su show favorito. En cambio, si yo simplemente digo show, uh, switch on the TV to watch your favorite show, significa pues que eso es lo que hizo, ¿verdad? Encendió la tele para ver su show favorito. O sea, simplemente explicando. Uh, Walter, diga. Turn on TV o turn TV on es, es como la orden pienso, y Twitch es como la acción de presionar el, el, el botón del control remoto y encenderlo. Ajá. ¿Sí? Sí, sí. Así funciona. Los Exactamente. Dos. Ah, ok. Y normalmente también la cosa es cuando yo utilizo el turn on the TV o uh, turn off, en cualquiera de los dos casos, bien como usted menciona, es uh -huh. más en el caso de decirlo como una orden o una indicación hacia uh -huh. alguien, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Enciende uh -huh. la tele, apaga la tele. Eh, uh -huh. Switch on o switch off significa lo mismo, o sea, encender o apagar pero más como con el deseo. Exacto. O sea, yo tengo el deseo de hacerlo, no es que alguien me lo ordenó. Pero conste, es más común decir turn on. O sea, mm -hmm. no es tan común decir switch on. Es mucho más común decir turn on. O sea, I turn on the TV, entonces, o uh, I turn the TV on. O sea, lo mismo, ¿verdad? Es sí, mucho sure. más común decirlo de esa manera. ¿Sí, Javier? Excuse me. Um, You can say, or you, it's usually to hear something when somebody tell you, just switch it. Switch it. Just to like, uh, encender? Switch, 
switch it. Ajá. Pero en, en qué sentido sería it's eso? Normal, it's normal uh, if I tell them, tell to somebody, I want to switch off the TV. And he, he says, just switch it. I don't know if that is correct or is something. Yes, I mean, you can use it if you had previously stated that you want to switch it on. Porque ese es el detalle también. Sí, if you say that you want to switch it on, yes. Somebody tells you, yeah, just go ahead, switch it. Uh, that basically states what you have said before. Instead of saying, yeah, switch it on, they only tell you, yeah, switch it. Uh, making the, 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 the sentence a little bit shorter. But if they don't mention like uh what is the action if they only say switch it that is a little bit weird because when we talk about that the word switch by itself it means change something you know exchange o sea te doy me das so the verb switch on its own o sea por sí solo es el significado que tiene pero si ya decimos switch on ahí sí se refiere a, a encender verdad si yo digo switch off se refiere a apagar entonces, depende de cuál es la palabra que acompañe a este verbo. Yo puedo decirlo. Yes, ok, go ahead, switch it on. Or, sorry, you switch it. En ese caso, sí. O si alguien me dice, can I switch off this light? O igual, ¿verdad? I say, yeah, ok, go ahead, switch it. O sea, significa, ¿verdad? Hazlo, apágala. Entonces, pero solo estoy confirmando lo que la persona ya dijo. O lo que yo mismo pueda que en algún momento le dije a la otra persona si me contestan, ok, I'll switch it. Eh, es porque ya mencioné esa otra parte, la parte de la preposición donde se especifica cuál es la acción que se va a realizar. O sea, si yo digo switch on es encender, si yo digo switch off es apagar, si yo digo, por ejemplo, switch up es subir, en el caso de las cosas que tienen volumen o, o diferentes niveles, uh, entonces sería subir, switch down sería bajar. Así que esas son las cuatro eh, acciones más comunes que se pueden realizar con el verbo switch. Sí, sería switch on para encender, switch off para apagar, switch up para subir, switch down para bajar. So if I ever tell someone any of those uh, instructions and that person answers only by saying, okay, I'll switch it, or yeah, switch it, well, that means that they're only confirming what you just said. O sea, solo están confirmando, ¿verdad? Lo que acabo de decir. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay. Y se pueden uh, utilizar en todos los tiempos verbales, teacher. Sí, ¿verdad? Pueden cambiar, ¿verdad? Pasado, uh -huh. presente, o futuro, yes, o yes, yes. continuo, ¿verdad? Sí, también se puede utilizar. Okay. Por ejemplo, um, I, I, if I, I'm explaining, if you ask Alexa to do it, Alexa will okay. switch it. Sí, will switch it on. Oh. Yes, Alexa will switch ah. it on. Entonces, eso es en futuro. Okay. Um, okay. Si hay un niño que está encendiendo y apagando la tele cada rato, yo lo puedo decir en el, en el presente continuo, ¿verdad? Your kid keeps switching on the TV. Sí, tu kid keeps switching on the TV, entonces significa que el niño sigue o continúa encendiendo la tele. Um, uh -huh. Let's say that la tele estaba encendida cuando ustedes llegaron a la casa después del trabajo. You can say by the time I got home, the TV was already switched on. Uh -huh. Sí, eso sería en el pasado. Entonces sí se puede utilizar verdad en todos los diferentes tiempos. Okay. Thank okay. You. All right. So next one is take off. Take off. Uh, refers to removing someone's clothes or another's body of, from one's or another's body. Um, this is another of those verbs or phrasal verbs that can be used for another meaning or has another meaning. And uh, it will be for planes. When a plane is departing an airport, uh, it is taking off. Sí, así que también se puede utilizar para eso, ¿verdad? Para hablar acerca de los aviones, cuando un avión está despegando, you can say that it is taking off. Uh, if you are taking clothes uh, out, of, out of somebody's body or removing clothes of somebody's body, that is also take off. If you take off clothes off your own body, that is also take off. So I took off my shoes and lay down on the sofa. Okay, so yes, those will be some of the uh, of the uses that we have for the verb take off. Then we have warm up. Warm up. Prepare for physical exertion or a performance. Prefer for physical exertion or a performance. In this occasion, we have, oh, sorry, by exercising or practicing gently beforehand. By exercising or practicing gently beforehand. This is the warm up. 
casi como a lo que nos referimos cuando decimos que vamos a calentar antes de un partido. Básicamente es lo mismo, ¿verdad? Este es otro de esos verbos que también tiene un, una utilización que, si bien es cierto, es muy similar, o sea, no cambia mucho, ¿verdad?, el significado que va a tener, pero es importante aclararlo. O sea, también tiene el significado eh, literal que es el calentar algo, ¿sí? Calentar algo. Cuando ustedes utilizan, ya les he mencionado en algunas ocasiones, ¿verdad?, algunos verbos, eh, y después deciden utilizar las preposiciones como esa del up, o sea, eso se va a comprender como eh, si van a aumentar esa característica. Entonces, si yo digo warm, significa tibio. Si yo digo up, entonces es como sube el calor. De esa forma, por eso sería literal si yo digo warm up a sandwich. Entonces es más literal usarlo de esa forma, ¿ok? Si yo estoy calentando un sandwich, es más literal. Pero... Si yo estoy hablando acerca de calentar para realizar alguna actividad física, ese es el que más, más que todo se va a entender como el phrasal verb, ¿ok? Porque no necesariamente es algo literal, no es que ustedes se van a meter en un horno para calentarse, ¿verdad? Sino que simplemente están tratando de eh, acostumbrar o generar ese calor en el cuerpo para poder, ¿verdad? Más adelante, pues, realizar la actividad física que ustedes deseen. So, example here. I always warm up thoroughly before going out for a jog. I always warm up, warm up thoroughly before going out for a jog. All right. The next one is work out. Work out. Engage in big groups. Sorry. Yes. Sorry. 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 What? What does mean jog? Oh, jog. Jog, jog is cuando vamos a trotar. Time? Yes, a trotar. Jog. Okay, if, thank if you're you, sorry. jogging, yes, you're very welcome. If you're jogging, you are trotando. So yes, jog es trotar. Okay, um, workout. Engage in vigorous physical exercise. So this is way stronger than warming up. Of course, warming up is when you are getting ready to go ahead and do the workout. John tries to work out three or five times a week at the local gym. John tries to work out three or four times a week at the local gym. So this is uh, an example where we are mentioning what someone is practicing, that someone is doing uh, hard exercises. So that is what we mean when we say work out. Okay, next one is let in or let somebody in. Admit someone to a room, building or area. Let in, cuando estamos hablando de admitir a alguien, ¿sí? ¿Verdad? En un cuarto, en un edificio, o uh, una construcción más bien. Cuando decimos building en inglés, de hecho, es bien confuso porque muchas personas escuchan la palabra building y de una vez piensan solo en edificio, pero eh, también building se refiere, ¿verdad? A una casa, o sea, una casa también, o sea, puede ser un building. Entonces, building, el detalle o la forma más correcta quizá de interpretarlo sería como una construcción, ¿verdad? Or an area, sí, o, o una área específica. Um, so, here we have the example. We let our lovely dog in the house every morning. We let our lovely dog in the house every morning. Sí, dejamos entrar, nosotros dejamos entrar a nuestro adorable perro en la casa todas las mañanas. Ese sería el significado de toda esta oración. So, we let our lovely dog in the house every morning. Ahora, eh, importante, importantísimo. Esta específicamente, este ejemplo puede tener doble interpretación, porque, o sea, si ustedes se pasan a, a no entender que esto es un phrasal verb, si esto no estuviese, por ejemplo, remarcado de esa manera, se podría entender que la persona está diciendo que dejan, ¿sí?, a su perro en la casa. Todas las mañanas. Ok. We let, sí, we let, se debe entender que dejamos, sí, dejamos a nuestro adorable perro en la casa eh, todas las mañanas. Pero aquí estamos usándolo como un, eh, un phrasal verb, así que significa, ¿verdad?, que estamos hablando acerca de permitirle la entrada. Sí, entonces nosotros ingresamos, metemos a nuestro adorable perro en la casa todas las mañanas. Ese sería el significado de este con el, eh, entendiendo, ¿verdad? Que let in va a ser para permitir la entrada a un lugar. Ok, next one is come in. 
enter a room, building, or other place. Please come in and sit down. Please come in and sit down. So come in, very similar, very common to let in, but let in is when uh, the thing or the person who is going into that place has to ask for permission. You know, like if uh, let's say that you guys are part of a team and I want to work with your team, I'm going to ask you, can you guys let me in? O sea, les voy a preguntar, ¿verdad? Si me dejan ingresar. En cambio, si es un lugar al que no necesariamente yo tengo que pedir permiso para entrar, eh, yo puedo decir come in como con mayor facilidad. A ver, a lo que me refiero es, let in requiere más como de una autorización o de un proceso, ¿sí? Para poder admitir, ¿verdad? A esa persona o a esa cosa. En cambio, come in es mucho más como algo que ya se entiende. Solamente es que estamos pidiendo el permiso, pero es un permiso más de autorización, ¿verdad? Como dejándole saber a la persona que vamos a ingresar, ¿ok? Es más informar que pedir permiso. Es más bien eso, cabal. Más informar que pedir permiso. Digamos que ustedes, por ejemplo, cuando en bachillerato, ¿verdad? La profe o el profe de bachillerato se enfocaba mucho en decirles esto. O sea, que ustedes le tenían que pedir para entrar a la clase, ¿Can I come in? ¿Can I come in? No sé si a ustedes les pasó, pero en mi caso, pues la profe todo el tiempo nos pedía que dijésemos eso para entrar. Yeah, I never forget that phrase. Yes, ok. Entonces, ¿Can I come in? Diferente, si era la primera clase de la mañana y ustedes eran de los que llegaban tarde, entonces ustedes no iban a preguntar, ¿Can I come in? La forma correcta de decirlo sería... Can you let me in? ¿Sí? Me permite entrar, ¿verdad? Porque están pidiéndole al profe el permiso para entrar porque ustedes vinieron tarde, hasta cierto punto, digamos, rompieron la regla de llegar temprano. Así que por eso you ask, can you let me in? En cambio, can I come in? Es más tipo, ya regresé, puedo entrar. ¿Sí? O sea, ya es como con el permiso. Simplemente estoy queriendo informar que voy a ingresar para pues, no ser mal educado, ¿verdad? Y solo entrar así por así, abruptamente. Así que esa es la diferencia o la forma eh, diferente en la cual podemos utilizar el let in y el come in. Uy, perdón. Ahora, we have move over. Move over. Adjust one's position to make room for someone else. Yes, move over or other people may say scoop over. Scoop over. Sí, ese es más eh, coloquial, digamos, el scoop over. Es más como con amigos, ¿sí? O sea, el scoop over es como, háganse, háganse payasito, ¿sí? El scoop over. En cambio, move over es más tipo formal, pidiéndole a alguien, ¿verdad? Que haga espacio para otra persona. Move over will be, for example, if you are in a meeting and uh, many of the seats are already taken, but there is still one space, but that space is to the end of that line. And instead of having this person go one by one by one by one and stepping on people's toes and stepping on, on people's shoes, you rather have the rest of the people in that line move over one position and then you make room for that person. So that will be move over, ¿sí? Entonces es básicamente, ¿verdad? El moverse o hasta cierto punto podemos llamarlo como apartarse to make a space or make room for someone else. Now, Could you guys move over so I can sit down as well, please? Esta sería una pregunta muy común, ¿verdad? En una reunión. Entonces, si ustedes ven que todas las sillas ya están tomadas y piden de favor que las demás personas se muevan un poco para poder sentarse ustedes. Could you guys move over so I can sit down, please? Or can sit down as well, please? Okay. Then we have 14. Kick out. That will be the last one that we're going to be uh, reading today. Kick out or kick somebody out. Spell or dismiss someone. Básicamente se refiere a expulsar a alguien. Cuando utilizamos el kick out, it means to expel someone. They kicked me out of the club after the fight. They kicked me out of the club after the fight. Básicamente significa ¿verdad? que lo expulsaron del club. Aquí obviamente pues, puede entender doble sentido el club. Puede ser un club donde hay fiesta o puede ser un club como los que hay normalmente en las universidades. But yeah, they kicked me out of the club after the fight. All right, so that's the one, kick out. Okay, guys, so I think that will be the end of tonight's class. Tomorrow, uh, we're going to be coming to the last class of this course. I will be very glad if I see you guys here. And uh, 
yeah, you know, we can uh, finish up our lessons with the rest or some of the phrase or verbs, and then we can get to work on the idioms that I have ready for you guys. So thank you, thank you people very much. I hope you have an amazing night. I hope you can get to have some rest tonight and see you tomorrow. So have a really good night. Have a good night. Thank you. Bye.